What's up everybody, Average Joe here. So today's video, we're gonna do a quick little update on the EG4 solar panel rack from Signature Solar. I do still get quite a few questions on that. You know how it's holding up, what do I plan to do for winter time and snow and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna answer a couple of those questions and then we're gonna see if we can make it a little bit stronger to hold a little bit of snow. I've had it installed for at least a good six months or so. So we're just gonna do a quick little update on that and then maybe answer some of the questions that I do get regarding this rack, all right? So if you're not familiar with the last couple of videos that I did on this, basically it was an install video and how I installed it and then I overloaded it with 10 solar panels. It's designed for four. Uh, the solar panels I used are Sanyo. They're a little older, odd shape, so that's how I could fit 10 panels on here. So anyway, so this is the solar panel rack from Signature Solar. It's technically designed for four solar panels, all right? And of course, what I did is, since these panels are pretty odd shaped, I just got some metal brackets and basically screwed them together to make two panels on top of each other. So therefore, I've got 10 solar panels on this rack. And of course, you know, many people's concerns is it being overloaded and the weight and all that kind of stuff. And they wanna know how it's doing. Well, it's doing great. I actually have no problems with it whatsoever. It hasn't moved, it hasn't fallen over, it hasn't flown into the neighbor's yard or anything like that. All right, and we'll even go down here to the edge of the dirt you know, and none of this is disturbed, all right? And I have four, four posts right there, all right? And each one's three feet into the ground. Um, I guess one of the things I just didn't even really think about was mounting my screws and stuff straight into the top, which I guess that's a big no-no. So potentially I could have a problem later on, but so far I have had zero problems with that. Uh, some of the people did suggest maybe trying to seal this, you know, so water can't seep in there. So I will do that sometime whenever I get, I guess, the correct stuff. Otherwise, I would have to remove this and maybe put a cap on there and mount directly to the cap. But for now, I think I'm just going to leave it because so far it's working great. So again, like I said, the ground here is not disturbed. We've been through a couple of really bad storms. I did a little video on that like a month or two ago. And of course, you know, nothing has shifted or came out on any of the posts on the top. So the only thing that I'm concerned about is the winter time and the snow putting a lot of weight down here on the bottom side. I guess my concern is, is possibly the bolts shearing and then the whole panel rack you know, tilting down. That's really all I'm worried about. I don't think anything else is going to fail, at least at this point. So, so far, to answer all your questions, everything is doing great. And it doesn't move, it doesn't like wobble a whole lot. It's probably hard to see on camera. It doesn't move a whole lot. I'm just worried about if we get like a foot of snow, you know, and stuff like that. That's pretty much all I wanna prevent is it from toppling over if we can. All right, so for me, what I'm thinking today to help maybe stiffen this up and help hold some snow load up here on the top is, I think I'm just gonna add a brace from the six by six post down here and then bring it up to this rail right here and just attach it right there. So just, just another rail that goes down like that. And then if we step back a little bit, that'll help keep it from maybe falling in that way. I think that's the best thing I could do right now. Sure, I could probably add something back here, you know, anchor it right up here and then go down and anchor it to the ground somewhere. I don't think I'm going to worry about that. I think I'm just going to stick with this brace right here and see what we got. All right. And the material that I'm going to be using is basically some off cut three quarter inch conduit. All right. I think that would work, honestly. So basically, if I just kind of I'm just going to set this right here. Just add another brace in that general area. I think that might do it. All right, we're just going to do a rough measurement and then, you know, go with one and see if we need to adjust from there. So, let me get this pole out of the way. 
And we're just gonna go right up here, down to roughly here at the bottom. And I'm gonna measure 34 inches. All right, so that's 34 inches. I think what I'll probably do is add two more inches onto each end, so a total of 38 inches. And then we'll probably flatten the last two inches so we can have a, a good mating surface, drill a hole in it, and then bend that flat spot, you know, to whatever angle we need, and then mount it in here. Sound like a good idea? Bad idea? I don't know. That's what we're going to try. Let's get to it. Measure 38 inches. And then we'll measure back two inches over here for our flattened spot and bend. Then two inches on this side for the same thing. I am going to start the smash process in here just so it's pretty I guess equal give it a couple smashy smashes let me do the same for this side and then give her a smash all right we got our smash started right at two inches we're going to continue flattening this I'm just going to hit it with a hammer to finish it we got that on both sides and then once it's flat we can angle it to whatever angle we need. All right, now we got the ends smashed flat, all right, both sides. And now what we can do is basically stick it back in the vise and bend it. It's just gonna be a rough, rough guess first. We'll take it back outside and finish the rest of the bend. Nice little bend here. All right, there we go. Got a bend on there and a bend on there. I don't know the exact bend. We'll have to take it outside and bend it the rest of the way. So I need to bend this one a little bit more. Let me do that real quick. I'm just gonna hit it on the ground over here. There we go. Oh, I think that's gonna work out great. So that's basically what I would like to do is just add one more brace right in here. All right, see, we'll just attach it somewhere roughly right up here. And we'll, of course, attach the other end right down here. So I just gotta drill some holes in this and then the post. And of course, right up in here in the bracket. I think that's gonna work out nicely. All right, here we go. Got all four braces made and I got all the ends bent pretty close to the exact same. Next thing we need to do is drill some holes on the ends and I was gonna use a bigger bolt, you know, one hole and a big bolt, but I actually don't have any. So I'm gonna drill two smaller holes and use some smaller stainless steel self-tapping screws. So these ones right here are gonna go into the aluminum rack and then these ones over here are gonna go into the wood. These ones are technically for like those roof panels and stuff like that, you know, like tin roof has that rubber washer on there. Uh, that's about as best as I have on hand right now. So that's what we're gonna use. Boom, two holes each side. They're just, they're just holes. They're not anything special. They're not even lined up perfectly. This isn't going to be like exact science or anything like that. I'm just going to make some marks and drill my holes. I'm definitely pre-drilling aluminum because it seems like I always have the self-tappers just break right off. If you've drilled into aluminum self-tappers, you will understand what I'm saying. Should have brought a second drill. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely should have brought a second drill. <laughs> All right, there we go. Got one brace in.
two down, two to go. Boom, there we go. All four braces installed. And honestly, it went real quick, nice and easy. All right, so what do we think? We think this is gonna hold, you know, some snow just by putting these four braces on here. I guess, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I don't think it's gonna be any problem, actually. I think it's gonna be a great, a great addition holding up these panels. I mean, nobody else probably has to do this. I mean, I just did this because obviously, you know, I overloaded it with extra panels, you know, and it's a little bit longer than, you know, a regular panel would sit down. You know, if you just have your normal four panels on here, you know, you probably don't have to worry about anything like that. Like I said, I'm just doing it because I overloaded the panel. So there you go. I would say, I would say we're doing pretty good, ready for winter time. Oh, and if anybody knows what kind of stuff I should use to seal these up so water doesn't seep in and maybe help prevent the, you know, from the ends from splitting, let me know in the comment section. Hello there. New windows. New windows. They open and close. Nice and easy. <laughs> that was a quick, easy fix for this solar panel rack that is completely overloaded. Alrighty, there we go. Got all four braces installed and now we are ready for winter time. We're ready for that foot of snow just so I can wipe it off. <laughs> Alright, that's gonna be the end of this video. If anybody thought this was helpful for some odd reason, don't forget to like that smash button and I will see you on the next one. I think the battery's gonna die. Alright, we're on the last... <laughs> Oh.